got a score to settle with that son of a bitch. Devil May Cry. What's up guys, RBG here, back with another Devil May Cry 5 news update. Just wanted to say that we're nearing 300,000 subscribers and the support continues to pour in and to that I'm eternally grateful. Like seriously, you guys have no idea at how shocked I've been at the huge reception these videos have been getting. In the last video, we talked about the mysterious character V who has now been revealed to be Vitali, who's said to possess abilities that allow him to summon demons through chance. In today's upload, we'll be going over more leaked information regarding Devil May Cry 5's cast and the gameplay. But before we jump into the topic at hand, I want to remind you that I'm giving away a free mouse. Since you guys have supported this channel, I've linked up with Mono to give you their brand new gaming mouse. It features a high FPS rate, 7 different switches such as the back and forward buttons, an adjustable DPI, micro switches backed with LED lights, and much more. The shipping and handling average is around $5 depending on your location, so that's a steal. The link will be in the description box below, so make sure you jump on that while they offer last. But getting back on topic, DMC5's leading developer shared new information on the upcoming action game in the latest issue of Famitsu Magazine, like going more in depth on how they were able to balance the title's trademark action with the new photorealism. Hideaki Itsuno and producers Michitaro Okabe and Matt Walker noted that Devil May Cry 5 is going to have a focus on photorealism and this is going to impact the game in a number of ways. They talk about how their main goal is to give Devil May Cry 5 a more realistic feel and they're working on a consistent FPS frame rate for high speed battles that you can only get in a Devil May Cry game. As I mentioned in my previous video, they're not only 3D scanning people, but they're also 3D scanning clothing as well. Now I had previously shared my enthusiasm over the new realistic aesthetic in DMC5 because visuals haven't necessarily been a high watermark in the series even after it made its next gen leap. I mean, don't get me wrong, Devil May Cry 4 was a gigantic leap in terms of graphical fidelity, but the polished look did kind of detract from the dark grittiness that fans like myself were so accustomed to. And this is a franchise that has roots going back to Resident Evil. The first entry was initially going to be RE4 before it ultimately became the overtop badass hack and slasher we know today, but those aspects of the game didn't really take away from the horror elements. This new design looks like it's going to be bringing that feeling back. Because when something looks more realistic, the developers are psychologically obligated to make sure the violence is looking realistic as well. We'll get to see actual entry wounds with blood coming out as opposed to seeing a sword slide through someone like Krato and a sheet of blood appears on their stomach. You know, stuff like that. If you're telling a tale on how humanity is losing, then it absolutely has to be dark. With all that said, I've noticed a huge divide in the fandom regarding the new look and there are some flat out saying that this new Nero looks crappy compared to the old one. And to that I can say that I get where they're coming from, but I think we should really take into account the hard work that Exuno and his team has put into it. Because it isn't just about making the game look more real. I believe Matt Walker said it best on how action games feature movements that aren't realistic. So they had to put the best heads at Capcom together to make sure that the action still looks breathtaking, even with a photorealistic version of Nero pulling off humanly impossible stunts. And the heavy emphasis on the frame rate is only going to make the game look better. Because from what I've been hearing, everything is rendered in-engine and there aren't any pre-rendered cutscenes. As far as the 3D scanning is concerned, I think they had already mentioned this during the interview given at E3, specifically Nero's coat which Matt Walker was sporting while giving more info on the game. But moving on, Capcom states that the impact will extend beyond the aesthetics. However, because of the focus on photorealism, they removed a former series feature of being able to cancel motion, like attacks and movements. But for Devil May Cry 5, it'll read the input, but it won't simply skip through the animation of the previous action. The reasoning behind this is that with the high frame rate and the fidelity of the graphics, motion skipping would feel strange in what Capcom has described as the uncanny valley of action. A good example of this is how they struggle to find the right way to make you feel the weight of your character as he turns around. So it was very mandatory for them to find a way to keep the responsiveness while giving a more photorealistic appearance. Now based on the type of DMC player you are, this kind of news might come off negative or you might not care. I'm in that minority of players who doesn't really mind that the motion cancels are getting nerfed. I was never really one of those guys who went in depth on the advanced combos, but I know that there are a ton of high level players who are probably worried because cancels are what allows them to extend combos and pull off some insane maneuvers. And some of the main combos stem from aerial jump cancels or mid-air resets. Devil May Cry 3 is still arguably the best and most played in this regard because everything that made combos great was later nerfed in part 4. Like some of Virgil's moves, specifically his air trick, were completely different from how they were in Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. 
but that didn't necessarily take away from the experience since you could still pull him off using his double trigger. Like Virgil was a freaking Super Saiyan in DMC4 SE compared to how he was in the previous entry. But if there's any drastic changes that will take away from what the top tier combo masters liked about part 3 and 4, I think they'll find ways around it. Dead May Cry titles gameplay tend to be very flexible and we're able to pull off some insane combos by simply changing the button configurations around. And judging by the trailer you can tell that the developers worked hard on the animations. You can see Nero stumbling when stuff gets chaotic or there's a certain level of impact behind the move. Like you can actually see that some of the movements will have weight to them as the developers have described. But anyways, Capcom went into details about other features such as the background music changing when you land combos. For example, it'll change to a B melody then to a C melody to hype things up. That means unless you do something cool, you might get stuck on repeat of a A melody. And this is some great news because for the longest, the only thing special about the styles meter is that the font changes depending on the ranking. I always loved the meters in 3 and 4, but I did feel like they were missing something to get the player more excited to extend their combos. For example, even though the Devil May Cry reboot wasn't necessarily my favorite entry in the series, I loved how animated the styles meter was, especially when the announcer would yell out sensational or sadistic when you advance your combos. This new element is definitely something that's going to make the gameplay more fun and memorable. But moving on, I want to bring up something that isn't quite official but definitely brings up some interesting things that might be true. A few days ago, we got a random post on 4chan from a user who's chosen to remain anonymous. Now, I'm not that big into 4chan rumors unless they come with a source of where they got their info, and unless it's coming straight from the developers or we're seeing something extremely official in terms of art or a magazine, it's not something I want to pay any mind. But just looking at how some of this information sort of harps on some of the things we got from the Famitsu magazine, I think it's worth delving into. The first bit of info mentions the game's mission layout, saying that there are three scenarios, one for each character with 10 missions each. You can choose to play them in order, but Nero's is the first chronologically. Once you complete them all, you'll unlock the end game scenario in which you play as all three in different missions. Now we already knew that there'd be 30 missions in all and that each playable character would have 10 missions apiece, but we didn't know that we could potentially play in any order we wanted. If this is true, I'm thinking that each scenario will be more of a perspective thing where essentially each character's mission will take place during the other. For example, Nero might see a giant demon suddenly die from a distance but won't know who killed it, but if you play with someone else you find out that it was Dante or V. That's the only way I can see them allowing us to play in any order without spoiling the game. Because in DMC4 you absolutely had to complete half of the missions with Nero in order to play with Dante. Moving on, the 4chan rumor says Virgil isn't playable in the game, but Nero does get the Yamato later on. And this bit has me raising my eyebrow because if it's true we can pretty much confirm that the mystery guy that takes Nero's arm is Virgil or a corrupted version of him. I honestly don't understand why people don't see that it's him even though the clothes say otherwise but whatever. Like I think I've said all I could say about this topic. What I really want to get into is these details regarding V's supposed backstory. As I mentioned earlier we had recently uncovered what his gameplay would be like and that his official name is Vitali or Vitel however you want to pronounce it. But the interesting thing that I've noticed is that he supposedly has ties to Nico, whose full name has now been revealed as Nicolette Goldstein. The rumors say that V gives a different answer for his name each time he's asked for what it stands for. He's a much more vulnerable character than the rest of the cast. He was an orphan adopted by Nico's family and at a young age he discovered that he had a spiritual connection with the demon world. His tattoos are identical to Nico's as a symbol of appreciation for her raising him. Now I didn't mention this earlier because I wanted to use it to segue into these rumors regarding V, but in the Famitsu article it briefly brings up Nico's tattoos, stating that they have secret relations to another character. If we were to look at the visual evidence provided by the trailers and promo arts, the only other character who has tattoos besides Nico is Vitali. But I don't necessarily see which tattoo the rumors are referring to because Vitali has a ton of them, and his tattoos look like they have a more mystical vibe to them like Scar from Fullmetal Alchemist. I mean he could possibly have one tattoo that matches hers and I guess I can see them having some kind of brother sister relationship since the Goldstein family has been involved in the devil hunting business for generations and if Nico's grandmother can embrace a half demon like Dante then I don't think she'd have a problem accepting a weird kid who has special connections to demons. As a matter of fact I'm interested in seeing if he'll wield some kind of special firearm since the Goldstein specialize in making powerful guns. 
with the rumor goes on to say that V uses a magical staff or baton to summon monsters, and his different weapons are different classes of monsters such as demons, ghosts, and angels that he recruits after defeating them in a boss fight. Okay, so I briefly discussed what the weapon in Vitaly's hand was, to which I assume could possibly be the Yamato due to the color and shape, but most of the viewers kindly disagreed and suggested that it may be a dagger or possibly a magic staff to aid in his spells. If this rumor holds any validity, then it's safe to assume that it was in fact a staff. What's interesting is that it mentions that not only will he be able to summon demons, but also ghosts and angels as well. I have a feeling that each summoning will have their own effect on the enemies you fight. But moving on, the post goes more in depth on the dynamic music I talked about earlier, saying when you begin a battle, the song is an instrumental, and the lyrics will kick in once you raise your style ranking, followed by the chorus when you raise it even higher. At the higher rankings, the bass and instrumentation will be enhanced. And if you score a triple S, you can hear new parts of the song that aren't present normally, such as a solo or extra vocalization. A good example would be the synth riff you hear in the full version of the song Devil Trigger. If you hate Nero's new theme, then don't worry because Dante's battle theme is the typical shooty HG style we've come to enjoy. And V will have an orchestra rock style theme. Now, this is something that I felt Devil May Cry 4 lacked. While the music was great, there wasn't that many songs that stood out on the soundtrack that represent some of the main characters with the exception of Nero and Kidie. With DMC3, you had so many iconic tracks from Ladies' theme to the multiple variations of Virgil's battle theme. Those songs have become so popular, they carried over to other games like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Marvel Infinite. I believe this is something DMC5 really needs to focus on because the music is just as important as the action and story. Hearing that the music will be dynamic has me thinking it'll be similar to Killer Instinct 2013 where the chorus kicks in when you pull off certain combos. And I'm not just talking a beginning, a middle, and an end, I'm talking music that changes depending on the player's actions, whether you're performing counters, enders, and combo breakers. I'm afraid your path ends here. The music was dynamically changing to the things you or your opponent did. Ironically enough, singer Ali Edwards who performed Orchid's theme in KI-13 also performs the vocals in Nero's theme. But with that said, I'd like to end this video. I'm so excited about the info Capcom provided, and if the news from 4chan turns out to be true, my hype levels will be raised even further. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on this news. Are you excited about the new dynamic music? And do you think the nerfing of motion cancels will hinder the gameplay? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media platforms like Twitter, Reddit, or Facebook. I love what I do and I do it all for you guys. Once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.